Hi, I'm James Powell, and I'm going to show you how to do my take on the Chuck Doan Mineral Spirit Resist Method for chipping paint on scale models. Let's get going. So this isn't a very hard technique to learn. It just looks amazing. First thing you need, of course, is some type of basswood. Balsa wood won't work, it's too soft. And make sure you get basswood that flows along the grain. Sometimes you'll get basswood that has little yellow dots in it, and that could be the end grain, and it doesn't look very realistic. So I have a few different sizes of basswood here. This, this I was able to make it work in HO scale, in large scale all the way up to, uh, let's say, 112 scale. The very first thing I do, I'm gonna demonstrate on a piece of wood that's a little bigger here. Uh, this is a uh, quarter inch by eighth inch piece of basswood. So I'm gonna start here with this uh, approximately 16th inch by quarter inch piece of basswood. First thing you do is you get a, it's a gnarly old steel brush here. I can get it any, uh, any place like a Hobby Lobby or you know, I get these at uh, Harbor Freight. And you're just going to enhance the grain. So I run this, the brush in the direction of the grain. Don't run opposed to the grain. And this will really define the existing grain. It doesn't necessarily make its own grain lines, but it defines the grain that is already in the wood. That's why you need a piece with good straight grain. So let's look at that. Let's see if we can do that there. Right there. See how the grain is much more defined now? Um, it started out kind of flat like that. Now you can see the grain there. There's a specific reason for that. Not only are you trying to make it look like old wood, it actually affects the way that the wood chips the paint chips off the wood. So when that happens, you might have seen, there's going to be a couple little furry pieces, little fuzzy pieces that pop up. And uh, all I do to clean that up is I'll take a little piece of 220. I keep these all kinds of different grits of really small sandpaper at my bench. And you just lightly sand it. I generally, when I do strip wood, uh, you know, most everything I do is scratch built. I'll knock down the edges a little bit too, so they're not perfectly square. You know, you are trying to make an old peeling look here of wood. You don't want uh, you don't want nice sharp square edges. This can also be applied. This is HO scale clabbered here. It can be applied to this too. Some basswood's gonna fur out a lot more than the other stuff does, or the, the other stuff does. But you can take that 220 grit and knock off almost all of those furs. Here's something else I do. If for some reason you get a bunch of furs on there that uh, you just can't seem to get off, one thing you can do is use a lighter really quick and just burn those furs off. It works really good. Just heat them up, burn them, Hit them with your finger, and for the most part, they'll come right off. Just make sure you're not right beside your mineral spirits when you're doing it. And here is a piece of a old uh, large-scale door panel. The next thing to, to do is to use uh, a stain, a wood stain. There's two great wood stains out there uh, for scale models. I would say... I used to really, really like this silverwood stain. This is by Builders in Scale, and it's called Silverwood. This is excellent. Uh, Chuck Doan himself recommended this to me. And then Best Trains came out with this stuff here, Vitero Solutions. They have all different kinds of colors, and it is excellent. I've been using this nonstop, you can see. I've not even had this bottle for that long. And uh, this is aged barn wood, and it's really, really good stuff. So I'm going to use both of them. 
the more layers you put on of the stain, the darker the wood will get. But when this dries out, it will immediately give the basswood a really nice natural aged look. By the way, the strip wood all comes from uh, Mount Albert scale models in Canada. They provide strip wood to individual hobbyists as well as kit manufacturers. Okay, so I'll put on a couple layers here. There you go. And with the Vitero, when you first put it on, it's going to look a little almost purple. It won't dry like that, though. It gets very silvered. So there we go. And if you got both stains, no problem with mixing and matching the stains. You want different tones to your wood? Put some on one, not on the other. Layer it up. Generally on a big piece like this, I would brace it so it doesn't bend when I'm putting the stain on. But for this demonstration, I'm not doing that. I would say you could put on maybe three to four coats. It dries very fast because it's alcohol-based stain. You can really load up the stain on here. Don't worry about it. It's just going to take a little bit longer to dry. Go ahead and really coat it. All right. So once you have a few layers of stain on, the next trick, it's really interesting, is you put a pigment on top of the wood. Now this will color the wood and then make it look old, but it also helps the resist and it helps the paint peel from the wood. I use two different products. Mostly I'll use ammo products. Um, this is Europe Earth pigment, which I love. It's kind of a, a light brown. Uh, Dark City Dust by Ammo also. It's a, a very, well it's a darker brown, very warm warm color. And then I also have uh, raw umber and raw umber shade pan pastels. So what I'll do with those to apply those, I, I'll mix them with the stain and actually use the stain as a binder and apply it right to the wood. So both of these materials are paint pigments. The ammo pigments, the modeling pigments, and the pan pastels. And we'll just let it darken up really good. And we can also mix and match that. Now, the, the thing is, is the darker you go, the more contrast you're going to have with your paint that's on top of the surface. So if you darken it up a lot and you use a lighter peeling paint, it's really going to show and it looks great. Um, if you don't darken the wood up enough, which, depending on the effect you want to get, you don't have to. If you don't darken up the wood, you're not going to have as much contrast, but you don't always want a ton of contrast. Mostly for my stuff, though, I love it old and rotten, so I want that wood underneath to look super rotten and, and crusty and wet. So, what I'll do is I'll put on also a couple layers of pigments.
right over the recently stained wood. You can see how much darker it's getting. Now, if you don't want to mix this up and use your use your stain, you can just use regular old alcohol as your as your binder to carry it to the wood. There we go. But you can see this stuff's looking really old and crusty already. So as I'm looking at this, I see that these are drying really light. This one's completely dry. These are still drying. And I want to make them a little bit darker. So I'm going to use this dark city dust, which is a pretty dark pigment. And I'm going to apply a layer of that over top of it. Now the brush I'm using to apply this is a, uh, it's actually a brush made for weathering. It's got random bristles on the bottom of it. You can see that, but uh, works really well. And it kind of helps to simulate the grain. There we go. Just brush a little bit of this darker pigment on here. Now it's not gonna dry that dark, of course, but it will dry the, the darkness of the pigment that it that's in the bottle. So as I'm looking at this, I see that these are drying really light. This one's completely dry. These are still drying. And I want to make them a little bit darker. So I'm going to use this dark city dust, which is a pretty dark pigment. And I'm going to apply a layer of that over top of it. Now the brush I'm using to apply this is a, uh, it's actually a brush made for weathering. It's got random bristles on the bottom of it. You can see that, but uh, works really well. And it kind of helps to simulate the grain. There we go. Just brush a little bit of this darker pigment on here. Now it's not gonna dry that dark, of course, but it will dry the, the darkness of the pigment that it, that's in the bottle. All right. So these are pretty dry. They're not totally dry, but that's okay. So the next thing I do is I grab the mineral spirits that you can get you know, pretty much anywhere, any, any hardware store. This is kind of the, the green version of mineral spirits. And uh, I just pour it out into one of these little medicine cups. And you should probably use a different brush every time you do this, but you probably should use a different brush for your stain, a different brush for your mineral spirit, and a different brush for your paint. But for the mineral spirit, I'm just going to use the same brush. I'm going to brush this mineral spirit on. And I'm going to apply... Probably three coats. As it dries, it doesn't take long to dry, it doesn't take long to soak in. You'll see kind of a damp sheen appear on the wood. Um, it won't look wet, but it'll look damp. When that happens, almost like a, a satin paint. It's not glossy, it gets kind of satiny. When that happens, go ahead and add your next coat. Now, I'm not claiming to be an expert at this technique. I just used it. I really liked it. I could practice a heck of a lot more on it. Uh, but uh, I think you'll get the drift once I do it here. So I'm going to put on three coats. Once again, it only takes about 30 seconds, maybe a minute for each coat to dry, or at least get satiny looking. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. And you can really see the sheen on there. You can see the glossy sheen. That'll go away pretty quickly.
So you can kind of see over here, it's dried up a little bit, it's still wet over here. You can redistribute that. There we go. Redistribute that across the boards. A little cold out here in the garage, so it's not drying that fast, but it's getting there. You can always use the, the uh, hair dryer to speed up the process, but it doesn't need to be completely dry. So that's not necessarily a necessity. Now the paint you're gonna to use to put over top of this, the mineral spirit, you're gonna use an acrylic paint, okay? Um, these gray greens, grays look really good. I'm gonna use some white. And the reason I'm gonna use white is I want you to really be able to see the contrast between the wood and the peeling the paint. Paint, or the mineral spirits has had a little time to dry. I'm going to apply it, uh, apply the paint. Now, you could use an airbrush for this, but the idea is you want this to look like it's old and it's okay to see brush marks, right? So get a brush and you're gonna brush a few layers of paint onto the wood. Here's the thing, the Mineral Spirits doesn't want to really accept the paint, but it will. It just takes a few layers. If you only put one layer of paint on here and then try to chip it, you'll get a not a very very good effect. You want to uh, you want a good amount of paint on here. The more layers of paint, the more chipping. Big problem is once you get up past you know three layers of paint or so, the paint starts to become very rubbery and it doesn't look good. So about three layers is all you want. And unless there's really bad vertical brush strokes along the boards, you can just, just start coating it. And if you do get a mess up, you can always go back and change it. There we go. Here's that door panel. So I'm gonna put about three coats on these boards. Or, yeah, on the, on the uh, boards. There we go. And you'll probably get a little bit of the, 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 uh, the pigment come up in your paint and that's okay, not a big deal. You're not gonna get tons of it coming up because you do have a, a barrier there with the mineral spirit. go. Now, the time to put the next layer on, it's almost like how the mineral spirit dries. You're going to see a little, almost like a satin sheen come over the wood. Once that happens, you can go ahead and put the next layer on. So your paint isn't totally drying. It is drying enough that when you put the next layer on, it doesn't peel up. You probably have to experiment with that but it doesn't take very long, even out here, where it's probably 60 degrees, maybe even less than that, it's drying pretty quick. There we go. That layer of paint below it is taking it pretty nicely. You don't want it to pool up though. Right here in the clabbers, there's some areas where the paint's pooling up. Wipe those out. You don't want them to pool up. Once again, if the paint's too thick, it's gonna look really rubbery when you go ahead and peel it. There we go. There we go. Now, by the time I got the one set done, I'm probably able to go back and start again. Once again, if you have any really thick areas, brush them out. And brush marks 
are okay depending on your scale. If you're doing an N scale wall, you don't want to look like they used a F scale brush, right? So consider how big brushes would be in your scale if you're going to leave brush marks right there. See, you're not going to find a brush really that's bigger than two clabbers wide. And most of these things would be painted one clabbered at a time. So make, your, make sure your brush marks stay on the clabbered on an individual clabbered. Now, if you're scratch building, Chuck, and I, I agree, he does individual boards. He only does a few at a time. You can't do a lot of boards at once because this is all about timing. You only get a few minutes to get this peeling right. It's not something where I can let these set for an hour and peel. It doesn't work that way. start to see the glossy sheen go away. It's still glossy on there. You can see it kind of start to work its way out. Now this is the part that's tricky. Be depending on the temperature where you're working, you could wait 30 seconds before you peel, or you might have to wait five minutes. It depends on the ambient temperature in the location where you're at. Another thing you're gonna notice while this is drying is that when you're peeling it, the paint will be very, uh, it'll still be glossy. So you'll need to get yourself some dull coat. This is Tester's dull coat. <laughs> the, the Hobby Lobby sticker covers up the, the label, but this is Tester's dull coat. You can apply this with a brush, but much better it's apply it. It's a, to apply this. It's it's much better to use a uh, an airbrush. Much so that's what we'll use. So you also need at the beginning. I did mention this. And this is one of the most important steps. Is you need some Scotch Magic tape. This is the cloudy looking tape from Scotch. It's not the clear tape, but it's the magic tape. Let's see if we can get this first try. Maybe not. I still see some big areas with some wet paint there that I should have thinned out a little bit. Maybe we'll try one of these boards. So the wet glossiness is gone, but there's still a, a pretty, pretty bright sheen. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna test it. Lay the piece of tape down on the wood. I'm barely going to touch it. Barely touched the, the wood. Pull it up. Ooh, it pulled off a little bit of the paint, but it's still a little wet. See, it came off when it touched the wood. The paint didn't peel off all the way because it's not totally dry yet. So what happened is it did peel, but then it kind of wiped more white paint over the part that peeled. It needs to dry a little bit more. Once again, it's pretty cold out here. So it takes a bit of time. Now I do see a spot on this one where I think it's going to work. Once again, you're gonna get almost like a, a wet eggshell type of surface. Try it on this one right here. I'm gonna lay our tape down. And you can kind of see where it's going to peel when you push the tape on. We're gonna pull it off and you see the paint pull off. There it is, look at that. Now there's some really wet spots on here, so I don't know how well it's gonna work. We're gonna try it lightly, lightly. When you're first doing this, lightly push the tape down. There you go, look at that. It's peeling off. Now, when you have the thicker coats of paint, you're actually going to be able to get peeled paint chips that are still on the wood. There's a thick piece right here, but I think it's too thick to work, but we're gonna try it. Ooh, I see it's still wet, but we're gonna try it anyway. Oh, it's still wet. 
that's not going to work. But you can kind of see here how that's working, right? We can do these guys here. They're drying. You can see where I touched this one and the paint peeled off. That's how easy it is for the paint to peel off. So this takes some finesse. It's not just uh, get in there and jam that tape down and pull it off. You want to be really subtle with it. Another thing is if you put the tape on there and you push down too hard, when you pull up, it may pull up splinters of the wood and it's not going to look good. You want to do it just lightly enough. Let's push this down on there. Pull it off and see what we get. There it goes. Look at that. Look at that contrast there. That's beautiful. And it even left, it leaves a little bit of the pigment in there. So you have that darker old wood. Let's try it. Pull it up. There it goes. And this, this thickness of paint, which is three layers, it's starting to leave little paint chips, little peels. The paint is still stuck to wood and it's peeled up. So it's not just paint that's chipped off. It's also paint that's still stuck to the wood and it's peeling. And notice how the lines are going with the grain. That's one of the reasons we exaggerate the grain. There we go. I'm going to pull this one. I'm pushing pretty hard. I don't know how well it's going to work. It's peeling a lot off. But look at that. A new, a new weathered board. <laughs> a board that's weathered a lot. Let's try it again. There we go. Lightly. It's going to peel off. You can see when it's peeling up. You can see when the tape lays down, you can see it stick to the paint. You can actually see what paint is coming up. Pretty cool. Let's go back to this piece. That wet spot. Maybe it's dry. Lightly apply some pressure. See what we get. There we go. Look at that. This is cool. Check that out. Let's see if we can get that in there. Where is it now? Check that out. How neat is that? Very, very cool. Here's that other fence board. Check this out. I'm really zoomed in, so this is hard to do. There we go. See that? Look at that shipping. Let's do some more. See what we can get here. Let's try this piece of collaborate. Like I said, with little pieces like this, you can do it a couple different ways. You can take the tape and lay it clabbered for clabbered. Just pulled off a bunch there. Just pulled off the bottom edge. Let's see if I can get this right. I may not be able to hold it and do it. You can assist the tape. Pull it off. There we go. A little bit. Now what I've been able to do before is I've been able to fold the tape, like I said, and actually lay it on the clapboards I want to pull the paint off of. Pull it off like that. There we go. Try some more. I'm going to really push down on this one. Let's see what happens. Look at that. Yeah, that's it. Look at that. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Now you can keep using the tape 
but once you have that mineral spirit on it, it doesn't stick that well, but it'll still pull up paint. It'll just pull up less paint. So let's say you have a side of a building that's exposed to the sun, maybe the south side of the building if you're in the northern hemisphere. Pull a lot of paint off that side of the building. And lower on the building, pull a lot of paint off. There we go. See this? This piece isn't quite dry yet, but look at that. Bring that up here. See if we can show you. Look at that. Look at that. Look how the paint is pulling off in the direction of the grain. Very, very cool. Let's try another one. Here's that board that I touched and I actually pulled off paint with my finger. Now, when we first started trying, we tried that little spot right there, but the paint wasn't quite dry enough. And it didn't really pull off. Let's try it again. Watch the difference. There it goes. Lay your tape with the grain. Pull up. Look at that. Those chips are fantastic. Once again, you can see when you lay the tape down, you can see what pieces of tape or what pieces of paint are sticking to the tape. And it actually the more paint that's stuck to the tape, it becomes harder to see what's going to pull off, but it pulls off less. And it gives you a little bit of a... You can kind of work it a little bit better. Here, I'll show you this one. Look at this. Look at that. How cool is that? It comes out so nice. I mean, you can actually see on this piece where I have a little bit more paint up here. You can actually see the paint still attached to the wood, but it's flaking off. So I could have went with one more layer of paint on top of this. And got a little bit better peeling. Let's try this piece here. We haven't touched this piece yet. Let's try this piece. It's got a thicker area of paint right there. See how that works. Hit that. Pull up. Ooh, it pulled that whole thick area of paint off, but it left a little chip. Once again, look at this. Where are we at? Right. See that little paint chip it left on, left on there? That's cool. Very, very neat technique. I just love it. Now, I usually, before I did this, I would use this, this material. This is uh, chipping fluid, right? So this is similar to the old uh, hairspray technique. This, this one's very controllable, right? This is ammo chipping, scratches effects. And they also have one for heavy chipping. They're very controllable because you, you chip with a either a toothpick or a small brush, a stiff brush. Here we go. Look at that. How cool. Let's do this one really heavy. Let's pull off a bunch of paint off of it. See how I'm rubbing it? When you're rubbing it, you can actually see the paint that's going to come off actually becomes brighter in the tape. And you can see where it's going to pull off. There we go. Look at that. There we go again. How cool. Nice chipping effect there. Beautiful. Oh, here. Look at this. Very cool. 
All right, so what needs to happen After you're satisfied with how everything's chipped, you're going to take and you're going to spray or brush dull coat on this. Now, dull coat is a solvent based material, so you're going to need a solvent to clean your airbrush. This guy. And you're definitely going to want to wear a respirator when spraying it. Let's see. There we go. Look at that. How cool is that? So, because there is kind of an eggshell sheen on this, or maybe a satin sheen, you want to dull it out. Ooh, I think I'm looking at this and talking. There's a really thick area of paint over on this side. I might get some good peeling effect off of that. Let's see what we can do. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Let's see if I can do it closer. Right there. That paint just peeled off there. And if you can see, there's still a paint peel. Little chips still stuck to the wood. Oh, cool. We're gonna go over here. Pull it. There you go. Look at that. That's fantastic. Look at those peels. Now, like I was saying, you need to spray dull coat on this. That, that will solidify those peels. They won't be as fragile, and it'll get rid of the, the sheen off of the wood. I got one more spot that I'm gonna do right here. Check this out. See, I see there's a, a, another thick area of paint. You can see, I really only, I, I thought I did two coats, but I probably only did, I thought I did three, maybe, maybe I only did two. You can see where the paint's a little thicker? I don't think that's thick enough to look rubbery when we peel it, that whole thing just came. But those little thicker spots are where you're going to get the nice paint peels. You're going to get chips. If you want chips, apply that paint a little thicker. Yeah, that looks really good. Let me show you that one. Okay, here we go. Right there. Can you see those chips there? That's peeling. Pretty cool. All right, so spray the whole shoot match with dull coat and you're done. It's that easy. Like I say, use an airbrush, use the tester's dull coat, shake it up really good, spray it on there. And it's good. So this is by far and away my favorite paint chipping technique that I've ever seen. Um, you know, there's been the rubber cement technique there's been the hairspray technique there's been chipping fluid which I, I love for getting really accurate chipping but the thing about this technique is you can actually get peeling paint you can still get that paint attached to the wood and see it peeling off the wood I just love it and it looks about as natural as you can get uh, there's lots of things you can do after you put the dull coat on it you can put pigments on you can do other colors on top of it. You can do rust, you know, rusty nails, things like that. But this is, is really my favorite. Uh, you can even crack the boards, split the ends of the boards, and really make an extremely realistic look, even in small scales. Thanks for watching, and, you know, keep modeling, happy modeling, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.